In Hammerhead number three, we're going to be creating a sci-fi themed environment. We're going to start with a 36 sided cylinder that is placed at the center of the horizontal axes. The number of sides and placement is important. Place down a player info start for helping us scale the map correctly. Using the scale tool, we can correctly size the cylinder to set us up for face manipulation. Here we are in face mode, and pressing E to go into scale mode, holding down shift and dragging the horizontal scale creates these rings that will set us up to manipulate later. Let's move this guy out to help us eyeball the angles a little better. The ceiling is made in an identical fashion to how the floor was split up. We are in face mode using the scale tool and extruding new faces inwards by holding down shift and adjusting the desired size. These repeated portions in the video will be sped up after the initial explanation. Selecting the edge of the ring and pressing G, then shift 3, will allow us to quickly select the faces to extrude out and finish the skeleton of our mesh. Double clicking the edge will quickly select the entire ring perimeter, which we can then manipulate into shape. To help with visualizing the edges, double click on any face to select all faces in the mesh and press Alt T with the dev hotspot material selected. And let's get rid of this 3D grid. Now we're going to build some pillars and start with the basic block that is our foundation. By pulling some edges into place, we can make complex shapes. Creating loop cuts with selected edges by pressing V allows us to bevel the ring selection by pressing F and extrude these faces easily. Here I decide to go with a quad cut on these selected faces by pressing Ctrl D. And selecting the inside edges and pressing V, we can continue to use the flexibility Hammer provides us to make a major portion of our world geometry. I can continue the pillar build from the same mesh or make a new one. I decide a more modular approach, just in case later I want to use these individual parts in a separate instance or prefab that is modulated. With this face deleted, I can take advantage of the edge arc tool. Selecting these two opposing faces and pressing Y allows us to create an arc edge, pressing B to bridge the arc afterwards. What matters when it comes to creating the architecture in Hammer is how you build the foundation of every mesh. If you create it using the separate rings and manipulation points ahead of time correctly, you will be able to ascend to much more complex creativities. It is fine to create endgons that are planar. They can be time saving and are some advantages if you use these correctly. In some cases, you may want to avoid using endgons entirely. And as we build our toolbox of Hammer knowledge, it will become much easier to understand when and where to use them. Another way to create arcs is between two edges of two separate faces using the interpolated bridge tool. With the perimeters of both edges selected, press Ctrl B to create some quick connections that you can change the number of steps and angle on as needed. Here we just go with the default settings. With an object selected, we can mirror it with Ctrl F and dragging a line of reflection. Pressing Enter completes the mirror. To create these pipe rings, we select a ring, bevel it with F, select a ring edge and press G to select the edges, Shift 3 to go to faces and press E while holding Shift to extrude out the horizontal scaler. One neat trick is to extrude out the edges of a selected ring instead of the faces. This gives us an interesting turbine-like characteristic. This pillar is ready to be grouped together. Select all the objects in the pillar, right-click, select an object, create instance. Holding down tab and then clicking will set the pivot point. 
Since the map is being built around the center of the horizontal axes, you can easily see where to place a pivot point to rotate your architecture around. Here I mind-numbingly forget to lock the pivot point to the center of the map and waste plenty of time. I'll be much more efficient later. Because the cylinder was built on 36 faces, each extrusion made here will have 36 faces, making it easier to calculate how every 10 degrees should be a face. By doing some math and building on the center ahead of time, we're going to be rewarded by our advanced planning down the line. By creating instances, we afford ourselves the opportunity to make small changes and have drastic effects. Using the hide and unhide button is very useful. Here we press Ctrl H to only show the selected faces, allowing us to complete the meshwork. The edges are bridged by pressing B. Here we can see how changing the orientation from world to local by pressing tab on these faces allows us to pull them based on their individual orientation rather than as a whole. With the skeleton completed, we can use the bevel tool after double clicking an edge to select the perimeter and smooth out the shape of our sci-fi interior. These extruded ring edges make it easy to select the ring by selecting an edge and pressing G and then Shift 3 to select the faces. Extruding them up and down begins to shape and define the curvature of the interior. A technique for creating floor panels that are segmented is to bevel the ring of them with F after selecting them. With these beveled faces selected and extruding them down, we are able to create much more depth and pop with each floor panel. This next part requires us to separate the face from the mesh by pressing Alt-N. This allows us to have open edges and double clicking one of the edges to select the perimeter and then pressing F to bevel will give us a perimeter based on the selected grid size. With our panel completed, we can rotate it around the entirety of the map. Delete these faces covering the new meshes, and then with one of the meshes selected in object mode, press Ctrl-Alt-O to select all identical meshes. Right-click, go to Selected Objects, and click Replace Object with Instances. For this next part, we're going to make some more architecture for the ceiling intrusions using the same methods that we've used before. The basic shapes provided allow us to create a variety of ring manipulation points from the extrusions, and we can continue to manipulate the edges and faces to our design, and then bevel out any part that needs to be smoothed at the end. With instancing our creations and using the center of the map as our pivot point, it continues to make our workflow much faster to create these symmetrical builds. What if we want to add this object to the instance next to it? With this new ceiling mesh created, I'm going to add it to the pre-existing instance by using the Control x cut command, opening up the instance where I want to put it into, and adding it into there by pressing Control shift v Clicking OK will paste the instance in the exact spot where it was cut from. To make some pipes that run around, we're going to use the cylinder tool to create the base. Line up the cylinder to its desired position. And here we're going to make sure that the end face is lined up perfectly with our center pivot. 
Using the rotate tool and holding shift, extrude the face to desired rotation set and press shift G to repeat the action until it has completed the loop back to the original face that was manipulated. With the pipe selected, press Ctrl H to hide the rest of the world and delete the unnecessary faces that were a part of the scaffold used to make the full ring. With all the unneeded faces gone, select the two edges that make up this ring by double clicking each open side and then pressing M to merge them together. Here is another way to create these pipe supports. We're going to take a ring, bevel it, and then separate the mesh into its own object by pressing Alt-N with the selected faces. By pressing F, the mesh will be inverted, which will provide a scaffold for when we want to thicken them. Pressing G will thicken the faces to the selected grid size, giving us a mesh that we can rotate around the pipe ceiling to its desired locations. With all the hard work focused on creating the skeleton of this mesh at the beginning, it's easy for us to go through and create patterns within the meshwork itself. I want to continue to create different sloped angles that provide a focal point at the center, and extruding these faces up will give us edges that can be independently transformed to provide us with new angles. The wall panels for this sci-fi setting will use this face as a scaffold. Isolating the wall section, we are going to build one half of the panel and then mirror it later on. Shift X brings up the clipping tool and making sure that both faces are kept, we are going to create a series of face cuts to manipulate in a little bit. Pressing spacebar will create a cut without resetting the clipping tool. Press 1 to go into vertices mode and then select the vertices you want to connect Press V to form an edge between the vertices. By holding down Alt Shift and double clicking a face, we will select all faces on that mesh plane, and holding Control we can deselect the faces we don't want. After extruding out the shape we want, we're going to merge these faces together into a giant end gon. By pressing F, we can now bevel the edges correctly. Pressing Ctrl F, we access the mirror tool, drawing a line midway to reflect the wall we created. With some slight gaps, we alleviate this by selecting the edges and pressing M to merge them. With some rotation, instancing, and removing of the scaffold, we now have a perimeter of walling that can easily all be changed. This part is going to add some depth and see through elements of grading floors. We are going to extrude these faces down, and then separate the floor mesh into its own object. We then replicate the object back up to the original position, so that we can now scaffold the graded segments. Using the same technique as earlier, beveling the ring edges, we can extrude these segments as support beams, and then apply the grading material to the main faces. The pipes underneath, created using the cylinder tool, will continue to add to the layers of depth that we will emphasize with lighting in a later tutorial.
We need an entrance slash exit into this room, and to do so we will need to modify the shell a little bit. We're going to add back some faces, and modify the edge elevation so that we can extrude back the walls. Using the scale tool, and pulling at the modifier, we can flatten out the angles and align the faces vertically. We will do the same for the edges, flattening them so that they align with each other on both sides. With one more face extrusion and some repainting using Alt-H to hotspot the multiple selections as one face, our frame for an entrance slash exit is almost completed. Keeping these wall frames aligned to the grid is a good habit, although with the new Viz 3 it is not as stringent. In vertices mode, you can lasso with middle mouse the points and move them onto the grid manually. Don't be concerned as much about creating end gons. I know there's some tutorials out there that are insistent that they should never be used, but since the engine triangulates them automatically, there are times and places where they're warranted. You can see how the engine does this by pressing F8. In order to replicate the pipes that run along the ceiling, we will have to collapse the instances that make up the support rings. With the pipes and support selected, use the universal modifier and the scale tool to quickly multiply previous meshwork. These angled wall panels are made the same way we made the vertical wall panels. Using Shift Q to change the plane angle to the selected face, we can quickly treat the wall with some mesh manipulation and then eventually rotate the finalized instance. To reset the work plane, press Alt-Shift-Q. A faster way to rotate objects is to use the Command History Repeat tool. We're going to take the wall panel, setting the origin to pivot, replicate it along the rotation just once. With the last command selected in the Command History, modify the number of repeats and click the Repeat Commands multiple to quickly replicate. The ceiling architecture is going to be made to offset the interior ring by fusing together these panels, pressing backspace with the faces selected. Just like the floor panel beveling, we will have to extract this face, allowing us to frame and complete our desired meshwork. The support beam on the outer ring will be scaffolded from a loop cut and beveled face. The rest of the design is using all the skills learned previously in the video. There are several faces that are left and could be removed from the backside for better optimization. We will go over those in another video. To make the cable supports that hang from the ceiling, the sphere tool is going to be used. This will be cut in half to scaffold the design, and then mirrored to save time. The material used for the cable inserts will be an unlit black material. Mirror the object with Ctrl F after finishing the first half of it, and merge the open edge vertices to make it one object.
The cables are going to be made with the cable static tool. With the offset by a radius selected and a radius of 2, we will begin to connect the underside of our cable supports with each click of the mouse. We will now create the hanging element of the cables. To do that, we duplicate each node with a new one halfway between the cable supports. Using the 2D view, we can duplicate these nodes by holding shift and dragging the node halfway between. Select each new node that has been created. These selected nodes will eventually be moved into different heights, but will all start at a lower uniform level. Moving these nodes vertically, we can begin to see how it complements the rest of the symmetry. Adjust the entire height of the cable so that it fits into the support rings, and now take the time to move each one to a varying height. To create a second set of cables, simply select the entire static cable and press Ctrl Shift V. Select OK or press Enter to paste it into the same location, and press Ctrl H to hide everything else. In the object properties, change the radius of this cable size to half the original, and then modify the hanging portions of the cable so that we can get a staggered layered effect when finished. For the outermost layer of the ring, we're going to take the existing architecture that we've already made and modify it to fit the new perimeter. Using the extrusion technique we showed earlier, we can duplicate the ceiling pipes, as well as the cable supports that were just made. We can later restring all of this with a new static cable mesh using the same methods as before. The final part is to create a color scheme that helps you decide later when you go for a material pass how you want to outline your artwork. I tend to use three colors as a basis for the outline, and the hotspots help me identify potential contrasts. I hope you enjoyed this hammerhead. Please share, like, and subscribe to help us grow.